I'm African psychotherapist, somebody who really believes in, uh, we are what we think, so we need to be careful what it is we're thinking. Dr. Umar Johnson, school psychologist, author, educator. Kadia's greeting, this is M. Persuade, a recording artist, and our story too. Ja Rastafari. Greetings, this is Gratulous, and my, I'm um, AKA Reset the Mindset. Yeah, Reset the Mindset in our story. I'm also a recording artist and an our story. Thank you. My name's Khadija. My surname is George. Uh, my writing name is Khadija Sasei. I'm a poet, I'm a publisher. So uh, my, um, my display and exhibition is outside around Pan African poetry if you'd like to have a look at it. Thank you. So we framed five questions that we'll be going through. Um, the first one is who are we? We've asked, asked the young people this question and we filmed video testimonies. If everyone wants to turn this way. Well, we are Kushite, but mostly known as Africans and Blacks. Oh. Yes, we're getting beautiful. Yeah, we are Kushite, um, most properly known as Blacks and Africans. But we have, um, we, Africa is a whole. Some people come around and divide it and have people mindset here, there and everywhere. But most of all, we are all one in a mankind and womankind. Bless it. <laughs> Um, I'd like to kind of just say who we are not. We are not BME, we are not BAME, we are not a minority. So that is something that needs to be turned around and rejected. We are Africans. I would say legacy, loyalty and lineage. We are collaborative people, we are creative people. We also believe in kinship as well as culture. We have a way of doing things and lineage, our ancestors. We are both our ancestors biologically as well as psychologically. The A is for ancestry, the F is, the F is for forever. We are forever people. No one knows exactly how old we are. We are God's first people. The R is for revolutionary. We change things when we find them not to be in our best interest. The I is for inventions. We invented half of the things that are used in this world. K for culture, A for action. We do an in internationalism, Pan-African nationalism. Some people are lost, not everybody is lost, but some people are. So those who are not have to be there to support and help those who are. In a gentle way, um, you know, nobody has to rubbish anybody else or, 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 you know, make anybody feel small about that. We're there to help and support each other and encourage each other so that nobody is lost. Thank you. I would add to that the need to be authentically African. We have spent a lot of time and money trying to copycat most of the other cultures around the world. The way we think, the way we act, the way we dress, the way we establish our family. In many respects, it's not African. We have to be authentic. Things that are not authentic are not valued. They're not respected. And it's difficult for people to respect the oldest people in the world when they're so busy trying to copy the youngest people in the world. from, I would say God. We're the only people on earth whose direct ancestry goes all the way back to the universe. Every other people come from us, but we're the only ones that God sits down first. When we look at the African woman as being the first human being on earth, that means every black woman who traces their ancestry sooner or later comes to God. That's why our skin is black, because it's the color of the cosmos. That's why our hair is nappy. Those tight little circles represents 
the cyclical nature of African existence. Where we come from, we come from God. very similar thing. We are, we are divine beings. And I want to say we, we come from Africa, but we come from not the sense of Africa that we have now, but African ancient um, culture, wisdom culture. We come from a place where we knew that we were connected to spirit and we knew how to use spirit. And if we engage with that Africa where we came from, we won't have the issues that the brother was talking about there, about the separateness and the individualism and so forth. So we come from a place where we knew that we were connected not only to each other, but also to God. <laughs> As you can see, over here and all through here and here, there are young black people doing amazing things in this city and in every city around the UK. And I think we're blind enough. We're blinding ourselves, at, uh, uh, dismissing it. Dismissing it as something else. And I, I'm pissed off, actually. <laughs> if I can say that, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. Because, uh, you know, we're, we're blocking off other people as well. The people, the black people who aren't religious, we're blocking off the black people in the gay community, we're blocking off the black feminists, we're blocking off. What needs to happen is us all come together. Absolutely everybody. Because we, we need, we need all the hands in the pot to stir it, to make it work. Yeah. My name is Delicio, and um, taking what everyone has said, um, I'm a young person, and I'm aware of what's going on. And it's hard to see young black people who are like you, facing the same troubles as you, not receiving the kind of like opportunities that I have. Like I'm here, but all my friends that are like in the know, like they don't have opportunities that I do and like the older generation coming down at us saying oh you guys don't know anything well how can you expect a plant to grow when you're not watering it hi i'm Aline. you're good yeah. 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 my question is i want to ask the panel um in terms of where we're from what do you think about especially youth today that they wanna, it's not about where they're from, they refuse where they're from, or they don't want to be where they're from. Do you get know what I mean? Yeah, that's my question to the panel. Speaking about why the youth, many of them, have such an issue with accepting their Africanity, stems from the fact that self-hatred has been modeled for them by their parents in a larger society. They are what we allow them to become. And in many cases, they are what we actually made them to become. In fact, in many respects, this generation of African youth, I think, is a little bit more revolutionary and courageous than the previous generations of African people. And the last thing I want to say, where are the youth taught to hate the African? Public school. And as long as we allow our children to be socialized and educated, by the privilege of their oppressor, then the mindset that they will manifest throughout their life will be one that is self-destructive and anti-African in nature. So the solution, one of many of the solutions, is to give African children an independent, revolutionary, African-centered education. You cannot give the child's mind to the oppressor and then wonder why the child acts just like the oppressor. get here I would say in one word ignorance we forgot who we were the way we did things the way we thought and acted with one another the way we proceeded in the world that cultural ignorance has a lot to do with where we are now we also got here because we forgot our struggle in our experience the reason we breathe here now is because folks who came before us died and sacrificed their lives we didn't get here through the benevolence of white folk and we didn't get here by voting. We got here because people protested with their life for better conditions for African people. 
And the third ignorance is the ignorance of white supremacy. It is the ignorance of not understanding how the world in which you operate actually exists. We are losing because we are trying to equate the African struggle with everyone else's struggle. Now you can respect, you can respect the feminist fight, you can respect the LBGT fight, you can respect the Arab, the East Indian fight, you can respect all these other cultural fights, but you don't put them on the same playing field as yours. None of these groups, none of these groups. Let's, let's understand something. If you're African, there's a stage in your struggle that neither the lesbian, the feminist, the Arab, or the East Indian, or the Latino ever had to experience. They went from oppression to fighting for equality and acceptance. The African did not go from oppression to fighting for equality and acceptance. We had a third stage, and that stage was humanization. We had to prove we were people before we could fight to be equal. We had to prove we were people before we could fight to be equal. We're not fighting for the right to cohabitate with someone. We're not fighting for equal wages with men. We're not fighting for the right to have our culture accepted. We're fighting for the right to exist, to breathe, to live. You don't let another group's mission make you think that it is as important as yours. We suffer because we are not our own priority yet. We make everyone else's issue more important than mine, which is to say we suffer for not being unapologetically African. Can we give another clap, please? Real push right. We are suffering because of institutionalized, the institutions around us. Yes, you can name them out. We are suffering because of institutions. We're not suffering because of accident, because of the youth. I, and by the way, I love the exuberance of the youth and them talking up for themselves and saying they're on the mission and they wish to make things better and they, and they used to come together. I love that when they use them, yeah? Uh, we're not here to, we want to see the youth that rise. My daughter is 11 years old. She's never been to a Babylon classroom. You understand? Her name is Reggae. It's not, a, it's not one of those names where, her name is Reggae. It's in her passport. Her name is Reggae. The reason why I named her Reggae is so that she can pass on the legacy. Reggae is love. We fight against corruption. Yes? And it has an infectious base line with all world love. But they don't make the world love our music, but they don't love us. They love our food, but they don't love us. So that's why we say reset the what? Reset the what? Bless it. Hi, I'm Remember, and I just wanted to ask Dr. Uma to clarify what he meant by that our struggle is more important than the family struggle, because I, as a woman, don't, you know, suffer oppression. Differently, I am simultaneously black. And a woman, can we not incorporate feminism into the black struggle? Let's talk about that. <laughs> First of all, we need to know the roots of the feminist movement as a movement for white women yes. who were struggling. Let me finish. We cannot be emotional, we must be intellectual. The feminist movement was a movement by white women who were fighting against structural oppression imposed by the white male. He did not let her vote. He did not let her leave the house. He told her she could not go to church if she was on her menses. She cannot go to college, cannot hold a job. Her place was in a home to cook and to raise the children. So she fought against that. And I understood it because it wasn't fair. But when she reached out to the black woman, she didn't do it because she cared anything about your situation. But she simply wanted to use your numerical power to push her agenda. And a mistake was made with black women in the feminist struggle by equating your dynamic with the black man, with the white woman's dynamic with the white male. We don't control if you get a job. We don't control if you leave the house. We don't control if you go to college. The black male, by virtue of his own unique oppression under white supremacy, has never been in a position to dominate the black woman the way the white man has dominated the white female. So we're not saying that there's issues that don't need
to be addressed because there are. We have domestic abuse. We have sexism in the black community. You understand? So there's clearly sexist issues. But we would argue that you should fight that from an African womanist perspective, yeah. not a white feminist perspective. Yeah. Because the African womanist perspective recognizes that me and the black man are struggling together against a common oppressor, but I reserve the right to address any sexist issues in the black community, but you never let the white woman use you against the black man. Yeah. Unapologetically African. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Habiba. Um, to stand in solidarity with Sister here and to comment on what Dr. Umar has said. First of all, I think it's very patronizing to tell her um, to be not to be emotional, to be intellectual. She's been very intellectual. Yeah, so you cannot come here with this argue of um, this argument of emotionality. Secondly, I think we need to understand feminism different differently. Um, you're speaking to a kind of white feminism, but we've had feminism in Africa, um, which which predates, uh, you know, like which is which has been pre-colonial. If you look into a lot of African traditions, Mali, uh, the griot tradition, the jelly tradition of Gambia, Senegal, Guinea, Mali. If you look at the likes of Amikoita, Kumbasidi Be, Umusangare, um, in their songs like Musolu, once you understand the language and you begin listening to what what they sing about in their songs, it's purely feminism. They speak to women's issues. And um, you know the feminist issue is not mutually exclusive to, to the African struggle. You have issues such as circumcision. You have some issues like fistula in Africa, and it, it's because of really like sexism and patriarchy why we have some of these issues. And you know sometimes like the men, the African men, can be oppressors. So it's it's like one and the same. So do not exclude the feminist issue, and it's it's not a kind of white feminism. This is black womanism. This is black feminism, and. Uh, just, just to repeat this again, please do not come to her with, the, you know, saying that she's she's responding uh, emotionally. Like, I think she had a lot of respect to ask you the question um, on a very intellectual premise, and I would appreciate if, if perhaps some of the other panelists could could speak to this because I find your stance very problematic, Doctor Adi. And that's okay. Well, be very, that's all right. Be well appreciated. But Thank I'm going to respond since you're responding to me. Number one, but she responded. I'm going to speak first because she responded to me. Number one, your comment on being emotional. I would say the same thing to a black man who I thought was res was reacting with emotion more so than reason. That had nothing to do with her being a woman. That's something that's said to man and woman. As far as black womanism and black feminism, they are not the same. And there are black feminist activists, excuse me, black womanist activists who are trying to clarify African womanism versus a reactionary white female created feminist movement. Secondly, although there have been black women in traditional Africa who articulated the unique issues faced by black women in indigenous African society, they never saw the black male as a cause of their issues. In African culture, we work from family, man and woman together overcoming issues. We do not divide ourselves up by gender and then attack each other. We are a family first people. I just want to say I'm proud of our future. It's all been said. I think it's the decisions we make, the actions that we take collectively, individually, and the spirit that drives us and motivates us past, present, and future. I'm just immensely proud of you guys and girls. Where are we going? Despite as bad as it looks right now, we're going back to where we belong. And that is the rulers of the global hierarchy. We're going back to our greatness. We're going back to our power. Where are we going? Back to our ancient glory. We were not put here to serve, but to be in charge. We were not put here to be on our knees, but to be on our feet. Ask where I can, from God's spirit, and we go back the way God put us at. That's where we go. Thank you very much. Well, where we are going, we are going back to our original designated place. Simple. I love you all.
question but do we ever feel we could ever reach that level of enlightenment like even me myself I fall off at times you know I might decide that I might listen to a, a certain tune that's glorifying a certain lifestyle you know what I mean like a drug lifestyle even though I would never personally live that lifestyle like no. I'm listening to a bit of fake whack you know I you know, at the same time you know what I mean and can 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 our sisters ever you know maybe get away from the European way of thinking do you know what I mean like when it comes down to you know, um, you know, to, 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 to using makeup in a certain way, or, 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 or you know, maybe like doing things with their hair. Do you know what I mean? That is not that, that is not from diaspora. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just I'm just putting it out there as a, as, a, as a bit of a curveball. Can we ever reach that state of enlightenment where we don't have to do these things anymore? And that, or is it swing up swings and roundabouts? Is it is it a case of this is the universe? There's there's good as evil. There's going to be people that are going to sell, sell sell our souls for the, to the highest bidder. Do you know what I mean? Like. You know, what do people think about that? Like, where are we going? Is there any, ever going to be a state of total enlightenment for our people? And I just want to really put that out there. Well, first of all, we want to extend the credibility to the people that put this whole event together. It's really warm my heart. We're not going to lie, it's warm my heart tremendously. See, and, and you know, yeah, the issue with the woman. Woman, well, girls, you are the mother of creation. So you know, not that fret about you. You don't need to get educated. You, you have to know that in your mind that you are the mother of creation. Without you, there's no one. There's nothing. See, so don't make them, them little way, 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 get you off key. You understand? The next thing, remember, aims and objectives. They change their methods, not their purpose. Yeah? Day two on, we are performing around here and, and intellect and, you know? Because you know Bobby and them full of rhetoric, but we have the intellect. Ah, <laughs> bless you. Well, what I want to be when I get older, I want to be a teacher. I want to teach our story, or the many people know as history. But I want to teach our story and our schools to our people and I want them to learn the truth. And a lot of people ask me, how can you teach your music or how can you do your music and teach at the same time? And I simply say, I teach my music. I would just say that I enjoy the conversation. <laughs> and I would also say that we have to have those kind of conversations as long as they're done with love. There's a tendency to shut out or block out any conversation that is considered sensitive or controversial. And that's one of the reasons why we don't progress ideologically because we're afraid to go into those little crevices and work out those situations. We gotta have that feminist conversation because a lot of people don't know the history of the movement. We gotta have that LBGT conversation. We gotta have that multicultural conversation. We have to talk about why the Pan-African movement must be all African with no non-African membership. These are controversial issues, but they have to be discussed.